Um, yeah, so I mean, like in the end, it came down to another, like, here's another example of a hero killing, where Thor had to step in and literally smite. That's the only word I could use for it. He smote Sentry. <laughs> Good. The, the and, power of a thousand exploding suns. Well, yeah, he took his hammer and shoved it into that thousand suns. And, like, it was just because the sentry had overstepped his bounds. Like, it was... I thought, how did that work? Because sentry normally wouldn't have died from that lightning strike. Well, what I forget what happened there. Like, he was temporarily not fully powered or something? Like, how did uh, he actually... They had to deal, if I remember correctly, with the Norse stones, because um, Loki had originally kidnapped them and given them to a bunch of baddies to like power them up for um, the what's his face um, cloak, not the cloak, but um, oh, damn, the like, red, the red hood was that not it? the red, not the red no, hood. No, he had a freaking mask in the cape. The that loser guy that Bendis created. I wish I could remember his name. Um, now, now I have to quickly Google it so I can edit quickly, this. Quickly, tell us there. in the comments below who it was. <laughs> um, oh, what was so, it? Lo so Loki That's took the oh, Son of a... I'm, I, I can't even not Google this right now. I have I don't to even Google. care, you Marvel scum. The hood. <laughs> the hood. The hood. This is the hood. The hood. I didn't have, a, didn't have a Reddit it, okay? Oh my, my bad. I read it. I read the whole, like, Siege series. I read all of it. I was like, I have to read this. It's, it was gold. It was very good. I, like, it was probably some of the best storytelling that I've read in a very long time. And yeah, I, mean, I was unfortunate because it wasn't the best storytelling. Yeah. Um, but, like, so, yeah, I mean, these Norse stones were given to all these villains, and Loki, like, is sitting here going, shit, like, pretty much the sky is, like, ripped open because the sentry has now become the void. And, like, shit has just gotten real. So Loki essentially tosses out all these Norse stones to, the, like, all the heroes, and they essentially just have at it. And they pretty much... What it comes down to is it looks like the fact that they just, like, took his energy levels down to the point where he wasn't coming back. And that allowed Thor to step in and spite him good. Um... Yeah. That was so, so off topic. <laughs> Way to go. Um, well, we, we wanted to find out how it was possible for the sentry, who's this being who has unlimited power that gets smitten by smote. like Thor's thunder. Smote by we're, Thor's lightning. We're all smitten. We're all smitten by Thor. It's cool. Yeah, I'm so, definitely uh, Okay, so hammer. let's 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 jump topics. Let's jump topics. Um, let's talk about um, the collateral. So let's talk about the Man of Steel. So obviously we all know Superman uh, does his thing with Zod's neck uh, in like basically the second to last scene or whatever. And um, but what about all the what about all the collateral damage? Like that you can't tell me a bunch of citizens uh, you know fleeing for their lives or whatever didn't bite the big one on you know as they're flying around destroying buildings. Is he a good guy if he can do that? Like. Well, I mean, that one scene that's near the end of the movie shows a giant crater that has been created because of that, like, um, terraforming machine that they have basically blasting away Earth. And, like, so, I mean, clearly, tons of people would have died in that situation. Like, realistically, how can you expect them not to? No, but those were uh, those were deaths at the hands of Zod. I'm talking about like Superman bolting around. Like you often see Superman, uh, you know, like pausing the battle to like catch someone falling from a building and then puts them down gently and then resumes the fight. You know, like you'll see that in cartoons or you'll see that in the in the in the books. But but um, in the movies, like yeah, no, I ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, and he just <laughs> boots around, just tearing it up. Painting the, the town red with with citizen blood, you know, like he didn't seem to care. I think it's, it's rare for him to like. It's rare for Superman to like cause collateral damage, but it's more likely that he is like the instrument with which collateral damage is caused. Like someone punches him, and then he like flies into something and destroys it. 
like backward, not right. on purpose. And but I think in Man of Steel there are several cases where he punches Zod through like seven buildings in a row or something. It's it's a bit it, it's when I say it a bit, I mean totally extremely uh, excessive. <laughs> The destruction in that movie, but I I feel that they explained it away by they evacuated Metropolis. Everybody's fine <laughs> except Zod, who gets his next snap. Just so you know, I hadn't actually seen that yet. I didn't know Zod got his next snap. You Around have not seen Man of Steel. Well, why bother? <laughs> so, so here's how that goes. Your period of spoiler-free sensitivity has come and gone. So, I feel no shame. No, I feel it's, no. out. it's out on Blu-ray and DVD. <laughs> Buy it and now. As if I didn't know Superman vs. Zod what was going to happen. Right? Yeah, you could end up in the Phantom Zone like he's supposed to. Oh, you mean just like floating the square of... Yeah. Right. So, at least tell me, did 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 we get to hear him tell us to kneel before him? Yes, several times. All right, all right, I'm cool then. <laughs> I don't think he ever says kneel before Zod. He just says, "You will kneel for oh. me." Yeah, Whatever. I think they wanted to stick away from that kind of stuff. For we should purpose. talk about we should talk about heroes who kill for revenge or for like. Justice reasons. <laughs> like Punisher? Like Green Arrow. Like Green Arrow or yeah. Catwoman or I can't Punisher. think of Punisher. Yes, sure, Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> I promise not to bring up Punisher. I yeah. made no such promises. I made you all promise before <laughs> the episode that you would not talk about the Punisher because he doesn't count. Go He's back into the comments here. and look. I did not make any such promise. Let's go, Punisher. He kills people. He don't care. That's the end of the story. Bye. That is that is the end of that story. So so what you're saying is Honey Badger and Punisher don't care. Got it. Honey Badger ain't got time for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, you only fit two memes into that sentence. Uh, I know. Uh, what about, um... Green Arrow? Green Arrow, yeah, yeah, we were going to talk about that Cry for Justice. I actually didn't read that. Can you guys tell me a little bit what happened there? I have vague understandings of what happened, but, um, my understanding, which is vague, is that after a series of cataclysmic-y type horrible events happening to the Justice League and especially uh, Arsenal and folk. Prometheus causes the destruction, for the most part, of um, Star City and then has causes the death of Leanne Harper, who is uh, Roy Harper, who is Arsenal, kills his daughter, Leanne, and as revenge, his cry for justice... The justice that is meted out is Green Arrow kills Prometheus and then gets chastised and casticated, castigate words gets kicked out and yelled at by people who are mad at him for killing somebody. Okay. You know what, though? Green Arrow kills a guy who basically killed his granddaughter. Yes. Right? I, I, I wouldn't... I, I, I couldn't say anything to him. I couldn't look him in the eye and be like, you did wrong. That's true. Well, it's true in any case where it's something kind of like that. Like, is there a situation where a bad guy is so bad that he can't possibly be allowed to live anymore? Like, uh... Ask like, Wonder Woman. Yes, ask Wonder Well, not even in that case. Like, Maxwell Lord's just a jerk, but... Someone like the Reverse Flash, like uh, I don't not Aobard thought, like the Reverse Flash, Professor yeah. Zoom. He, in almost every iteration of that character, even the Hunter Zolomon Zoom version, that guy is really intent on causing some serious emotional damage to the Flash. So maybe he shouldn't be allowed to stay alive. And I'm sure that in 
more than just the one case, something a lot like being murdered has happened to that guy. <laughs> well, I mean, you can say the same for Batman and Joker then, because, you know, I mean, look what... Like, it's not necessarily pushed straight towards Batman. The Joker, he clearly, like... He'll he never does, stop. No, like, and yeah, he'll never stop, and he does some really fucked up shit. But that's sort of the idea with... That's one of the reasons why it's an issue when they when heroes kill is because they are supposed to be paragons and Batman especially is this like he is the end all and be all of you don't kill you do not kill I'm Batman I do not kill no killing ever Batman and <laughs> yet he kills with a gun a god with, but no but that was a time Batman. bullet though that was a, that's different <laughs> it's a time bullet that's I not apologize. a regular gun I apologize to you and your time bullets. This this is my personal interpretation of the character, which I'm sure Billy, as has been stated before, will argue to the death with me over. But I feel that Batman and guns and Batman and killing are not on the table if you are writing the character properly. Billy, put your comments in the YouTube comments <laughs> below. Feel free to call everybody asshats. And but you're traveling across the U.S., so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Hard traveling jerk ass. <laughs> okay, okay. Nice, nice comeback. We're very witty. Uh, so actually, I'd like to. Um, I I don't know if you guys read it at all. I actually didn't read it, but I was uh, I read about it. Um, Changeling, or you know, uh, previously known as Beast Boy at the time, um, kills Madame Rogue, or Rouge, excuse me, and. Uh, She's like, she does this like, um, I guess it's called a heel face turn right at the last moment in her last breath. How do we, is that, have we seen that a lot? Where it's like, like this repentance on death's door where a hero kills bad guy and bad guy's like, now I see the error of my ways because, you know, I'm dying and all. <laughs> <laughs> like, do we need that? Does anybody care for that? Does anybody want to see a villain redeem themselves? Like, it's almost like, it seems pointless. We don't want to see the villain redeem themselves. We want to see the villain die. Then we want to find out that they didn't die, and they come back later on, and we get another crazy story where it's back to the very beginning that they were because some other writer has now taken on the series, and we're back to good storytelling or something moderately close to it. No, screw the status quo. I want to see characters change and evolve, and I want people to remain dead. I have so, seen... Stop reading Marvel. I haven't seen that happen in modern age comics in a long time. Like, I think that's more of a silver, golden age trope. I mean, it happens in movies a lot and TV, but it doesn't really happen in comics anymore to see somebody repent at death's door like somebody who was killed by a hero anyway. It's more like they repent at a different time. At a different door, not yeah. death's door. I don't know. Yeah. Rarely well, do people repent. Well, fair enough, but there is a, there is actually a really relatively well-known trope that says, um, um, it's so well-known I can't think of it, it's uh, uh, redemption equals death. Uh, yeah. Anytime a character is redeemed, they're basically signing their own death warrant within a, an episode or two or a book or two or a, a few minutes if you're in a movie. Um, which is kind of too bad because it goes to uh, Alana's point. Um, you know, screw the status quo. But the problem is, as soon as you do screw the status quo, the status quo screws you, and then there's no more, you know, growth for that character beyond that point because they're kind of feeding the worms. As it were. This makes me think of a horrible, really annoying question to ask. But okay, so if people tend to die if they happen to know your secret identity. Are you therefore a murderer if you have a secret identity? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, you look at, I mean, this is, you know, obviously a bit of a tangent from our topic, but you look at Superman and, like, no, actually, is Superman really the best example? But, yeah, maybe he is, where it's like he goes through all these pains to maintain his secret identity, and then all these people get hurt 
or killed or whatever, uh, because he he like maneuvers himself into these incredibly awkward positions as a result of protecting his identity, and it's all because he's a selfish bastard and wants to live a normal life. Like, come on. So are you thing? thinking of like Golden Age, uh, Silver Age, Super Dickery there, like with all of the terrible things that happened to Jimmy Olsen? Yeah, well, no, those those things didn't happen to Jimmy Olsen. Superman did those to Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> <laughs> like the one time uh, Jimmy like bought him a new like what was it a tie or a, a new robe? No, a or house something. coat. Yeah, it was yeah. a house coat. That's what I seen. He just yeah. <laughs> lights it on fire with his vision. <laughs> I will teach Jimmy to stop trying to to join my or to figure out my secret identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys if you guys aren't aware, there's a, a website called the uh, I think it, I think it is is it Super Dickery is the website or Superman's a Dick or anyway Google it it's uh, it's a whole site basically devoted to the douchebaggery that is Superman Silver uh, and Golden Age so check that out. <laughs>